Hey guys, Matteo here, welcome back to a new video. And today, as you can see on my iPad right here, I wanna talk about DaVinci Resolve for iPad. I'm beta testing this uh, incredible app, uh, thanks to Blackmagic. And uh, today, just, I don't wanna really go in depth and do like an insane and complete review, but I mostly wanna do like an overview and I wanna show you guys what you can actually do with this uh, DaVinci version for iPad. So my setup right here is pretty simple. It's just for convenience, I have a magic mouse right here connected, of course, to the iPad. I also have my T7 Samsung connected, plugged in straight into the iPad. Now the battery is 100%, but in case you need to power your iPad and to plug in an SSD, you probably need an adapter because of course the iPad has only one USB port. What I really think this iPad version of DaVinci Resolve can be useful is yeah, maybe for people that are starting out with video editing, could be cool. Maybe people that can't afford an iHand MacBook, this can be a very good option. More than this version, which is the 11 inches, I think the 13 inches iPad could be a way better option because you have more uh, real estate in terms of screen. But I have to be honest, you know, if I find myself on set and, you know, I want to check out some B-Raw and maybe apply a lot and show a quick grade to the client on my iPad, now I can do this. Another cool thing about this iPad is that I already tried to do this. I actually had a project on my desktop. I exported it, I airdropped it to the iPad, and I opened it up, I plugged in my drive, I relinked the files in second, and basically I had the exact same thing out of my desktop right here on the iPad. So the relinking files thing was incredibly easy, incredibly smooth. But let's just start importing this file. I still need to explore this. I'm not sure what you can do in terms of file management, creating folders, subfolder. I'm pretty sure you can do a bunch of this stuff. But uh, let's just import the media for now because I just want to show you how smooth is this experience. So in this case, I have my two terabyte T7 right here. We're going in French shoot. La Vie Ferme, Pocket 6K, Car 1. And as you can see here, I have all my beautiful bureau files. I'm going to select all and I'm going to click open. And as you can see, the files are already in here to literally three, four seconds. I mean, this is a one terabyte project, so it's not that light, but he opened it up uh, pretty fast actually. So what we can do right now, uh, I want to show you first the cut panel. Of course, here you have a bunch of different uh, settings. So you have the media tab, the sync tab, transition where you can choose your cross dissolve or whatever. You have your titles that they work exactly like DaVinci Resolve on desktop. Now, what is very surprising about this version, this uh, app, is that to me, it doesn't look like a mobile version of DaVinci. It just looks like DaVinci Resolve, but on the iPad. Of course, there's some stuff that need to be changed, but in terms of the experience you're having, it's exactly like DaVinci Resolve on desktop. So that's pretty impressive. You also have your effects panel for the video editing. You also have on the other side here, export, full screen, and inspector where you can, you know, transform your clip. You can zoom in, zoom out, and do all these bunch of things that you do with the desktop version. But let's go back to media. In this case, let's select uh, maybe a random clip. Uh, let me see here, like this one right here. And of course with the mouse and the keyboard guys, it's much easier to navigate all these things. So let's see if the keyboard actually works like on the desktop. So in this case, I press I, so that's my input point. And this is gonna be my output point. Okay, guys, here it's completely random example. I'm not trying to pick up that perfect shot. I just wanna show you how smooth the experience is. Maybe we can get this clip of Karina, of course, smelling the wine. Let's see, in and out, voila. Okay, and then we drag the clip right here. Now, quick overview, you also have the home button here where you basically have all your projects just like in the desktop app and also you have your settings tab now here you can select your uh, timeline resolution so in this case i can go up to 8k now i read in the black magic notes that the light version the the app is going to be free for everybody on the app store 
and then also you're gonna be able to get the studio version for iPad and it's gonna be $95. These are the notes that I read in the beta release. But here you're gonna select Ultra HD Timeline. You can also select Use Vertical Resolution. You have your image scaling, color management. Uh, you also have general option, camera raw, and path mapping. Now, uh, let me select another clip. So we have a three, four clips in the timeline. But uh, so far, guys, uh, it's pretty smooth experience, I have to be honest. Okay, here we can add a bin that we can call sequences, you know, I'm gonna drop my sequence that I just created in here so I can keep my files organized. Let's bring another clip in. I'm gonna look at this one right here. In and out. And we're gonna drop it into the timeline. So right now we have three clips. But now just to give you an idea guys of how it plays back in real life, let's just put this full screen, play it back. Keep in mind guys, this is 4K timeline. These are B-RAW 6K files. And they're playing back like butter on my iPad Pro M1. So this is pretty unbelievable. I mean, I can see myself actually using this setup if I had the big iPad, like the 13 inches, it might have a lot of sense for situation where I don't bring my MacBook. This actually could be very cool. But I think the main thing here, guys, is that you're having a full Da Vinci Resolve experience right on your iPad and the playback is insanely smooth. So this was a quick demo of the cut page. Again, I don't wanna dive too deep into all the settings and all the options because there are many, but I wanna show you actually the title thing. So just like the desktop, you get your title right here, you bring it into the timeline and now we can just type in testing Da Vinci for iPad. And as you can see, you can decide the color, you can decide the font, you can decide a bunch of things. And of course you can also move into setting and start to move around your title. But before moving to the color grade, actually, let me do a really quick test because I, I want to really stress out the iPad uh, potential here. So let's just set up an AK timeline and let's see if this file just runs on an AK timeline and they kind of do, yeah plays back like butter on a AK timeline, which is pretty nuts. So yeah, let's go back to the 4K. Now, color grading tab, it looks very familiar. So you can see on the top here, you have your nodes button right here. So you can add nodes right here. And of course, if you wanna cancel, I wanna see if the shortcut works. Yep, shortcut works. Right here, you have a clip or timeline node, perfect. Right here, you have your zoom in on the nodes, great. Uh, you can decide the arrow or the hands, perfect. And down here, as you can see guys, uh, you don't have noise reduction as of right now, I believe, but you do have pretty much everything you have in DaVinci Desktop. Now I might miss something guys, but the two that I use are all there. Uh, you also have stabilization. So as you can see here, this is kind of crazy. Let's test out the stabilization right away. So I go here, stabilize. Let's see how long it's gonna take for this uh, short clip. Not long. Uh, let's see if we did a pretty good job. It looks like it. Now let's try to stabilize this one as well. Just a little bit longer. Let's see how long it's gonna take and not much. And yeah, the glass is kinda dancing there, but wow. So you can also stabilize clip. That's very good to know. Now let's test out some color green. What do you think? Of course, Let's try with our battery natural rec 709 LUT. I noticed that you can't really apply the LUT from the node. As you can see, you don't have any LUT option here. So what you do have is your LUT tab right here. So you're gonna press on it. I didn't have the time to import all the battery LUTs, but I have the natural, so here it is. I'm gonna take it, apply to the second node. Now I have uh, my battery. Uh, natural Rec 709 applied. I can do a preview, like on the Vinci desktop. Nothing, lots. And then on the first note, I can go ahead and adjust uh, whatever I need. So here are our color wheels. So I can bring up the gain just a little bit. It looks uh, pretty responsive actually. Uh, we're gonna modify a little bit the color temperature right here. Or, so I can show you this too. We can also go into the raw settings. So we go project, clip, we can choose Gen 5, Gen 4 color science, which is great. 
uh, we can change ISO, all this on the iPad and all this very smoothly. So we're gonna leave it at 800. We can change the white balance. So maybe we can put in 6,000. So it's a little bit cloudy. So not too bad. And then we can go back to our color wheels. Uh, increase a little bit here. Oh, also you have the highlights recovery option in the mobile version, it's pretty dope. Now let's try to apply the color grade on the other clip. My shortcut is not enabled yet, the one that I have on my MacBook, so it doesn't really work. I have to go through the keyboard preference, whatever, but I don't wanna do it now. Let's just do the classic way. So we open the gallery, we right click on it, grab steel, then we can select all this clip and we do right click here, apply grade, boom. And our lot is now on every single clip. Of course here, we're gonna have to bring up some shadows a little bit and we're gonna warm it up just a tad. I mean, I'm not really doing any color or any work today, right? So this was shot pretty dark anyway, but as you can see, wow, plays back great. Let's try some mask maybe because we also do mask. Let's create another node here. We're gonna put a mask on it, on the glass, for example, if we wanna focus our attention on the glass. Again, guys, I'm doing a random test. I'm not doing anything in particular. Yeah, that works exactly like the desktop. Again, pull up the highlights. I can also do the reverse mask where we're gonna bring down basically um, all the background, leaving the glass just as it is. And we diffuse it a little bit. Of course, these guys, it's just a test, but as you can see, uh, without a mask, works like a sharp. So let's take another look, full screen right here. Perfect. Smelling the wine. Wine bottle shot. And we're gonna have beautiful, okay, here of course is a little bit too bright. Let's bring it down to 400 and reset all our wheels, increase contrast. And again, guys, here you have your curves right here where you can do you know, whatever you want with your curves. You can play around, you can uh, screw up the footage as much as you want. You have your qualifier, you have your windows again, stabilization and tracking because you can also track a mask, which we should actually do a test here now that I'm thinking about, so, because you can, track mask, so let's try this. Is this, oh my gosh, it's really working. <laughs> Sorry guys, I didn't expect to work that nice and that smoothly on an iPod, so I'm a little bit excited. But you also have your sharpness control here, your radius, if you wanna go down, sharp or blur, whatever you wanna do, you can screw up and mess up as much as you want. You have your key and you have your sizing, input sizing, where there's the tilt, we can move the clip up and down and we can do pretty much all of this. Now, I didn't really check out the uh, black bars and the aspect ratio yet. I'm sure they're buried somewhere in here, but I don't really wanna go through it right now. Just wanted to give you guys an overview look of this incredible app that Blackmagic released or is about to release for iPad. When I was dreaming about DaVinci on iPad, I was basically thinking about a window where I can drag my bureau files and preview them. I was never expecting a full version. So this is a fantastic app to have. Also here we have our scopes. We can decide vector scope, histogram, whatever you want. And we also have our keyframes. We want to do some keyframe work on our frame. Apparently we can do everything we want in DaVinci, which is amazing. Lastly, for the color grading panel, guys, just because we're here, you can also export your LUT. So once your LUT, your color grading is applied uh, to your clip, you just right click here and you have your generate LUT option with 17 point, 13 point cube, and you can export your grade or your steel from here by click right here, export, and you can export your DRX. Never forget, guys, you also have the effects. For example, the dead pixel fixer, you have it. If you have a dead pixel, you can fix it. You just drag it right here and you can use it. So yeah, finally, let's go and export this project. Of course, you're not gonna have all those settings you have in result for desktop as of right now, but this is absolutely enough for me. So you can export A264. I'm not sure you can decide what kind of 
bit rate you want to export so 100 megabyte 150 200 you can't really choose that so that's a preset because it's a quick export uh, you can also do h264 hyperdeck h265 master youtube vimeo and of course we're going to try and export prores because we're sure that this is the highest quality we can possibly export right here we're going to find the location where to save our file let's do it on the drive save let's see how long it's going to take this is only 18 seconds edit so it's not going to take a while let's see eight seconds remaining well that's pretty good it's pretty good rendering time considering it's a 4k timeline with b-raw files 6k files exporting in 4k prores hq and now on our ssd here we have our timeline one which is the export we just did and we can play it back and this is a prores file exported from davinci resolve for ipad 1.54 gigabyte for this uh, 18 second clip i believe so that really worked out pretty well it's a beta so pretty smooth experience overall guys to show you I'm, I'm as you can see from my face i'm very excited again guys you can only use this app with m1 and m2 processor i believe all this smoothness all this uh, processing requires probably uh, a pretty powerful processor so um, I believe that's the reason why they limited to M1 or M2 so yeah thank you so much for watching guys let me know what you think in the comments if you have any specific request just leave a comment below and I do my best uh, maybe if you need to know something more specific I can do even another video but yeah this is DaVinci Resolve for iPad pretty unbelievable I'll see you the next one guys